Hey, everyone. Welcome to Locked on Lakers for Tuesday. Brian Kamenetsky and Andy Kamenetsky. The Lakers have made their final roster moves. They're kicking off the season tonight. And Andy, that means it's time to make some bold, bold predictions. We will yeah. do all of that on Locked on Lakers today. Steve Holt. You are Locked on Lakers. Your daily Los Angeles Lakers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Want to thank everybody for making Locked On Lakers your first listen of every day, Monday through Friday. You get the podcast, um, and uh, we we certainly appreciate that. Go check out the fantasy stuff. That guy's been, uh, Josh Lloyd's been crushing it. Um, and it's, it is a, an intense time of the year as everybody gets their fantasy seasons kicked off. I uh, want to let you know as well that today's episode is brought to you by Rock Auto Amazing Selections. Reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com and tell them that Locked On sent you. So tonight, Andy, it begins for yeah. reels. They're playing Woo. real games. Woo! And I've been oh. looking forward to this for a while, not just because, my God, I want to turn the page towards actual basketball. Like, just the curiosity of how all of this is going to end up looking, I think it is safe to say, has been killing all of us. And I'm so, I'm so stoked. Like it's like, you know, last year there was, you know, obviously there's interest in every year. Things come together every year and or do or don't. But to some degree, um a lot of last year and you know felt a little bit like, oh, are guys going to stay healthy or not? Like this feels a little bit more interesting in terms of the process that the Lakers are going to go through um, combined with the, are they going to stay healthy or not? And so I'm just, I, I like the players. I'm really looking forward to this process. The Lakers on Monday, as the season opens uh, tonight, finalized their roster, claimed Avery Bradley off of waivers from Golden State, and they signed him to a non-guaranteed deal. So he occupies at least temporarily that 15th roster spot uh, for the Lakers, obviously, it's a bit of a nod to losing uh, some of their depth right now. Wayne Ellington will not be available to start the season with his hamstring. He's the hamstring, right? Yes. Um, Kendrick Nunn will be listed as probable for tonight uh, for tonight's game. And um, no, Malik. No, Malik Monk is probable. Kendrick Malik Monk is, is probable. questionable. Yes, thank you. So the Lakers are facing a little bit of depth issues. So they sign Avery Bradley. If this isn't the sort of I. I the non-guaranteed part of this, I think, is is what matters here because if this is what they plan on doing all year long, I don't get it because they've signed somebody to a the most crowded position that they have. If it's a temporary thing where probably in December a roster move comes where maybe Avery Bradley isn't on the team anymore, it's fine. You know, I mean, Vogel knows him. The team knows him. Rob you Lincoln know, Avery knows the guys. Him. Yeah. So um, I, I don't know how good he is anymore. Um, but, Golden State apparently didn't think he was very good at all. <laughs> they had him in the preseason. They let him go. Um, as as I said earlier on Twitter, at Cam Brothers, um, the Lakers have a very, very stringent policy the last few years of no swingmen wings, and damn it, they are sticking to it. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. What I, I, you know, How much he plays is an open question. How long he is on the team is an open question. But if you're looking for a plug and play kind of guy where there is no learning curve for the system and things like that, Avery Bradley certainly fits the bill there. I was skeptical of how well he'd perform a couple of years ago, and he certainly served a, a useful function. Uh, particularly defensively with this team. This it is ironic, Woodard. though, I will say, and and you know, wishing him the best. Uh, he was a cool dude when he was in the locker room. There is an irony to signing Avery Bradley because you're dealing with in injury issues. Yes, um, and that's actually something that's going to come up as we get into our big, bold predictions for this Lakers season. That's going to be our second segment and our third segment today. Lots of stuff, including three-point percentage, where we think they'll finish defensively. We'll talk about injuries, and we, of course, will tell you whether or not the Lakers are going to win a title this year. Uh, but first, there actually was a little bit more news that came out of Monday's practice that is significant for all of this. Frank Vogel uh, said he did know the starting lineup, but he's not going to tell us. Shocked, shocked that he wouldn't yes. reveal that information. Yeah, um, it's funny. I mean, first of all, Vogel treats this stuff like he works at the Pentagon and like mm -hmm. this information, you know, the the stability of the world rests uh, on the balance of how little everybody around the world knows about it. Um, it's just <laughs> the way he rolls. But it, what I do think is interesting about it too, though, is as much as you and I 
consistently say that closing lineups and overall floor combinations matter more in the grand scheme of things than who starts. Starting isn't irrelevant because if it was irrelevant, again, he would not treat this like he was working. And also, yeah, we just and we wouldn't spend so much goddamn time talking about it. Like it obviously matters for something. Um, so we'll see what they do um, Tuesday, you know, tonight, and and then again on Friday in Phoenix. But the 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 Lakers also talked about minutes, and obviously there's so much attention, Andy, given to the workload of LeBron, the the workload of Russell Westbrook, the workload of Anthony Davis, and specifically to LeBron, uh, he Frank Vogel said that he's looking to try to keep this around 34 minutes a night. And really said mid thirties for all three of the big three is what they're trying to do. A couple other interesting things out of that that I thought, you know, LeBron actually himself said sometimes he feels worse when he plays less. And Vogel said that they also want to keep an eye on how much time goes between those Le- those LeBron runs. They they don't necessarily want him sitting too long in between and potentially getting cold and maybe risking injury that way. <laughs> All of this leads me to believe, Andy, the best way to keep these guys from getting their minutes piling up, piling up, make them so they don't have to play a lot of fourth quarters. Like yeah. blow teams out and sit and then you're done. You can take your shoes off. That's the best way to keep their minutes down. Yeah. I mean, it's funny, actually, like LeBron in some ways talking about how, you know, he doesn't he, he had said, I don't play the game thinking about injuries. And I also feel worse when I play low, lower minutes. And he was smirking a little bit when he said that like it was there's a little bit of tongue in cheek involved with that like I, I took that to mean more I don't want to play fewer minutes but what's interesting though about what you were saying about that in terms of guys do sometimes get cold you know when they've been sitting for too long it's sometimes the reason why older players you'll have them play more of a decorative starting role just because they don't like to warm up then sit back down all of that is an acknowledgement of yeah maybe lebron there's no maybe he is clearly not hashtag #washed king but he is hashtag older king, and all of these things are really a question about his age, whether LeBron really wants to heavily acknowledge that or yeah, not. Yeah, but you know, it's funny to me, like I I still, maybe, I, look, maybe I'm being naive at this point. LeBron missed a lot of time. He talked about, like he didn't do any basketball stuff for a couple months after the season over, really needed to let that ankle heal. I still worry about AD more than I worry about LeBron. I am actually more concerned about Russell Westbrook than I am LeBron. Russ, over the course of his career, has been very durable, except you know the last couple of years has been dinged up more, and his game is built on that sort of ferocious athleticism. And I think ultimately what the Lakers are trying to do by bringing in Westbrook, by designing this offense where they want to run a lot, which as we've talked about is actually less taxing on, on these guys than grinding in the half court. I don't think there's any question. And creating motion and creating ways to to like I think it's designed to make as the minutes as I don't want to say un, what what's a word for untaxing uh you know as relatively as, less taxing re, yeah less as as the little the smallest amount of physical demands as they can and so if they play 34 or 35 a night it's not a grinding 34 or 35 it's a flowing running 34 or 35 and that to me is different. I'm not saying it doesn't add up, but that to me is different. Like how they play is different. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't disagree with you. I mean, I, some of this is about degrees and, to and it's be hard. Honest, to, it's I, very hard to quantify. There's no I, I was going to say it's hard to quantify, not just for us. I mean, I, I don't even know if guys like LeBron himself or the mm-hmm. training staff can truly quantify. Maybe they can, but I, I have to imagine there's a certain amount of uh, inexactness to it. Regardless, sure. The what could ultimately though end up doing in what you're talking about, and I actually agree in terms of the style of the offense and it being relatively less less taxing. The defensive end is not going to allow LeBron any time off, or the idea that the guys would be able to take some of that load off him defensively. LeBron is one of the best defenders they have. Right. Like this isn't like the last couple years, or particularly the year they won the championship, where they really were enough high end defenders where I don't want to say you're hiding LeBron, but but you're you're not asking as much of him. Right. This The way this team is set up, he's easily, not just one of the five best defenders that they have, the gap between whoever you put with LeBron and the other four and the rest of the roster, until proven otherwise, 
is pretty stark. It's Anthony so, Davis. It's Anthony Davis, LeBron James. You throw for fun. We'll throw Kent Bazemore in there. Dwight. Dwight plays. And that's it. And like so, like, and that to me is one of my major concerns with this team in in terms of the wear and tear issue, is that for everything that they gain offensively, they potentially give it back on defense in terms of wear and tear. Um, so that that is my my big concern there, and something that we will obviously be tracking throughout the season. Up next, though, Andy, it's time to put on our prognosticating hats and make some predictions for the 2021-2022 season. We've got our own categories. We've got stuff you guys have sent in for us. Uh, We will do all of that next. Locked on Lakers brought to you by Theragun. Don't let the stress of daily life weigh on your body, whether you're an elite athlete or somebody like me, an elite podcaster, just trying to get through the day tension-free. Theragun helps. It is a handheld percussive therapy device that releases your deepest muscle tension while using scientifically calibrated combinations of depth, speed, and power. It sounds like you're describing an athlete. While as quiet as an electric toothbrush, the Gen 4 Theragun gets to the source of the pain by releasing tension using Theragun's signature percussive device, which goes 60% deeper than vibration alone. The Theragun app even learns your behavior and suggests guided routines. We have one of these in our house Holy crap, this thing is a game changer. I know I mean, Brian it, has one as well. It, not, it loosens your stuff up. You feel good and groovy and ready to go. Yep. Uh, trusted by 250 professional sports teams like Real Madrid, elite athletes like Paul George, DeAndre Hopkins, Maria Sharapova, thousands of cu- customers, and again, elite podcasters like myself. So try Theragun for 30 days, starting at only $190. Go to theragun.com slash locked on right now. Get your Gen 4 Theragun today. That's theragun.com slash locked on theragun.com slash locked on. Uh, so thank you to everybody for signing up and supporting and subscribing to the Locked on Lakers YouTube channel. Uh, in addition to supporting the podcast, we really appreciate it. The, the, the channel continues to grow. Uh, got this comment today from Deshaun Farrow. Uh, left in the comments section for Monday's podcast. Thank you guys so much for the show. As soon as I get on my forklift at work, this is the first show I tune into. I love it. I, I hope that's okay. I hope you're allowed to listen to this sort of thing while you're driving a forklift. I don't know. Well, at the very um, least, don't say what uh, union you're a member of. Don't say like which, which place you work for, what city. Like, don't don't tell on yourself. Just right. let. Just let a bunch of uh, foremen around the country or really around the world worry that there's that one dude driving around right. distracted. So let's do this. We got we got a lot of things that we want to cover in our prediction sections. So many uh, important aspects of the Lakers. We're going to start with some questions of our own that we think are really important about kind of shaping where this season is going to go. And we'll get to some that you guys have sent to us as well. And finally, we will cap it, Andy, with the boldest prediction of all, the most important one. Are the Lakers going to win a title this year? Uh, but let's start here. The Lakers will finish where in defensive efficiency. We just finished talking about the defensive side of the ball. This is the big question mark I think they have long term. Where do you have them finishing uh, in defensive efficiency this year? I'm going to say 13th. Ooh, um, I'm okay. going to say they're on the lower end of the high third of the league, something like that, or the high end of the second, something like that. I mean, it's it's tricky when you start tearing a lot of this stuff because sometimes the differences, you know, between, you know, the amount of basket, you know, amount of points given up per hundred possessions, it can be, you know, just like a basket's right, it's two t- it's it's a tenth of a point, two tenths right. of a point, and all of a sudden you go from eighth to fourteenth. It's, or it's even not like functionally that different. The degrees of this can often be pretty tricky and you can improve or uh lose your defense somewhat incrementally and it might not seem like that big. Well, yeah, and I think last year was a great example of that the Lakers certainly deteriorated as they lost, you know, 90% of their lineup and they still managed to they were not the best defensive team in the NBA by the end of the year, even though statistically they finished that way. They okay. were I think remarkably good considering who they had available. Um and that is actually why and I think I think you're kind of tearing it is is smart. I have them at the bottom of the upper third. I have them finishing ninth. Okay. But I do think that that's going to improve over the course of the year. I think for the first third of the year, I do not think they'll be that good. I don't think because I don't think LeBron's going to be able to go is going to be going full out. I don't think Anthony Davis is going to be full out on that side of the ball. They've got too many injuries, not enough continuity, and they're still and and you know, I, I so I, I think they're a middle of the pack team for a lot of the year. 
And I think given what Vogel's track record is, given the ramp up that, that, uh, that guys like AD and LeBron, I think will go through that, that will improve over the course of the year. So that by the end of it, that they're somewhere around the top 10. And I think that's good enough because if, if they're a top 10 defense by the end of the year, that will be good enough for them to compete and get to the finals, assuming that they make the type of offensive improvement to compensate for it. Um, and that actually, Andy, is a decent seg into our next question because these things are tightly related. The Lakers will shoot what from three-point range? For reference sake, last year they were 21st at 35.4. What do you think they're going to do this year? You know, this is also really interesting. This is really of, hard. Yeah. Well, but also in talking about, you know, relative degrees and stuff like that, because last year, like you said, they were 21st with 35.4, which wasn't really that far off from league average. The previous season, the one where they won a championship, they actually shot slightly worse. They were 34.9, same ranking. But uh, the point being, though, last year league average was somewhere around 36%. Like mm -hmm. not that much better than what the Lakers did anyway. And sometimes the the difference between being below league average and what is acceptable isn't that big. So to me, along those lines, I think a lot of this really comes down to how many threes does Russ take over the course of a season? You are it's as if you are peering into my notes. And also, and, and also Anthony Davis. Yes. Um, if Russ keeps his threes just at a reasonable number and Anthony Davis can get somewhere back to like his career best, which frankly wasn't that great. It's only 34%. That's the best mm -hmm. he's ever done for a season. I've said this many times. Anthony Davis is seen as much more of a floor spacer than he actually is. I think the Lakers can shoot somewhere around 36-ish percent because theoretically they're better guys like Mello, Nunn, Monk, Ellington. Those guys are going to be prolific with the amount that they take. You know, it's not like a couple seasons they've had with like Caruso or Marc Gasol who shot in the 40s but barely took any. Mm -hmm. I think those guys can can keep up the team's overall average as long as Russ isn't irresponsible and AD can just be better. And I and I I think this is a great example. Like in investing, they talk a lot about like you know a lot of de what determines whether or not you make money is is based on. How if you can manage your losses? That to me is what this is. If you look at it, like you said, Russell Westbrook took four a game last year at thirty one and a half percent. That's not good. AD took nearly three a game last year, shot twenty six percent. His bet, like he, he, the season where the, you know the the championship season, he was only at thirty three percent. But there's a big difference between thirty three and twenty six if you're mm -hmm. taking three or four a game. Westbrook, you know, a couple of years ago in OKC, took five and a half a game at twenty nine excuse me, 29%, like those kinds of percentages will drag them down. I am not a believer in Bazemore finishing over 40% again. He had never done it until this year. I don't, I, I need to see him do it twice before I believe it. I don't, I, I am not buying Malik Monk at over 40% until I see him do it twice. But I think both of those guys can be in the mid to high thirties, you know, 36, 37, 30, and that's fine. Um, the only player I think on the Lakers that I would bet to shoot over 40% from three is, is Carmelo. Um, but if, if they can limit the downside, like you're saying, I have them at 36 and a half percent, which probably will end up somewhere league average, but league average, if they can run, if they can do all this other stuff would be a massive improvement in their offense. It doesn't take much in terms of better yeah. three point shooting one or two a game to change the way that this all works. So Andy, it is time for each of us to make one bold prediction. Not some wimpy little thing, but something that will that, that will quite frankly make our friend run his forklift into a wall. Uh, he might lose his job. Do you want to go first or me? Uh, you can go first. All right, here's mine. On a per capita basis, I believe that the old guys on this team, I'm, 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 I'm pegging that at 32 and up, will actually be healthier, miss fewer man games played um, ba you know, per capita than the young guys. I am not a believer that the Lakers are going to lose a ton of games uh, be because of old. Now, they do get a little help. They'll probably be rested a little bit more. Um, they may not play as much, some of them. But overall, I think the health of this team, 
I am still more concerned about Anthony Davis. Now that Avery Bradley, who's only 30 and conveniently slides underneath my threshold for this question, um, he's hurt all the time. THT is already hurt. Uh, Kendrick Nunn is bang, bang. Like, I am just as concerned, if not slightly more concerned, about the young guys. Malik Monk has a bit of a checkered history in terms of health. So uh, that is my bold prediction. I think Melo is going to be available most of the year. I think LeBron's going to be healthy. Um, I'm, you know, aside from Ariza, um, I think Bazemore is going to be healthy and available. Dwight's going to be healthy and available. I am confident, more confident in the old guys than the young guys. Yeah, that's I mean, my it, bold prediction. It's an it's an interesting way of framing it. I mean, because it's it's a little bit of a cheat in the sense that those guys are going to be relied on to play game in and game out less, which lessens their opportunity to get hurt. But I, but I understand where you're coming from, and I do think there's sort of a an interesting inverted logic to it. My bold prediction: Russell Westbrook and LeBron James will average double-digit assists this season between Ooh. one or both being on the court at the same time, the opportunities to set each other up, the way the Lakers are going to be looking to run the break constantly, the emphasis on motion, the emphasis on cutting, the, the lack of, hopefully, isolation going on. I think they will both average a shade over, if not more, 10 assists per game, while I think their, their overall points are are going to end up dropping. Okay, I, I don't. I don't expect Good you to luck be to everybody else. Alive. By the way, getting right. any assists, it's going to be right. these no. That's two it. That's guys. it. There are no. There are none left. But like, I, <laughs> but I'm wondering. I, I legitimately wonder if that's ever happened. That is a lot of assists for two guys to pile up. Um, and so yeah, I like it though. That would be yeah. really cool. Like if that happens, that means this thing is humming, and uh, I am here for that. Yeah, absolutely. That that is my bold prediction. I th I think both of them are going to average near career lows for points per game, if not career lows. They're both going to be not scoring nearly as much as before. I don't think it's out of the question Russ could average a triple double on this team. But either way, though, I think they will both in this average formula. By the way, assists. Anthony Davis averages about thirty seven points a game. <laughs> you know what? Everybody wins. It's great more power to him. Um, all right. Up next. Your questions for us in the big predictions episode as we uh, kick off the season tonight. Uh, Golden State, uh, Lakers against Golden State. The season begins. We have a few more predictions, Andy, including the biggest one of all. Will the Lakers win a title? We'll do all of that next. Locked on Lakers brought to you by Bet Online. Back better than ever. All eyes on the gridiron teams. Now at this point, just in the middle of what's been a great NFL season, a great college football season, and as always, Bet Online. Number one spot for all the football action this season with a new updated site and interface, even more odds, props, contests. Bet Online continues to be the number one source for everything football. So head to the website, use your mobile device, sign up today, receive your 50% welcome bonus. That is 5 0 for your first deposit. Do not forget to use the promo code LOCKED ON to receive that bonus from football, basketball, boxing, right down to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the great amazing offers available for the 2021 season bet online is the fastest easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports bet online where the games start uh lock on lakers also brought to you by rock auto andy with the ever increasing numbers of makes and models it's impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need so why endure often pointless and seemingly intimidating questions is your odyssey an lx or an ex mine is an ex and it's parked in my driveway, I, I don't consider that question super intimidating, but others are, and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the brand only their warehouse happens to carry, not the one maybe that would be best. You have computers, you have one in your pocket, you have one at home, with all of them have access to rockauto.com, and why spend 30%, 50%, even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or a car dealership? Let me give you an example. A Honda Odyssey fuel pump, the kind of fuel pump that I would need for my car, $353 from a chain store, $216 at rockauto.com. Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for 20 years, reliably low prices for every customer. Go to rockauto.com now, see all the parts available for your car, right? Locked on in there, how did you hear about us box so they know we sent you. Reliably low prices, amazing selection, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. All right, let's get to the... Um, the listener contributions, which we really appreciate everyone sending in. We've got some fun stuff about Dwight Howard. And let's start with this one from our friend, the Don cast at Metal Hoops Head. Who gets more minutes as a de facto five, LeBron or Carmelo Anthony? I love this question because to me, it almost means how often are the Lakers when Anthony Davis is not on the floor going to lean into going 
real small. Like, you know, you know, not even not putting one of those traditional centers on the floor when Davis isn't there, but you know, going small, Melo at a five, LeBron at a five, you're still talking about guys who are six, eight, six, nine. Like you are definitionally small at that point. Some of this I think could come down to, you know, who's in charge and LeBron is in charge. LeBron may decide I don't want to do that. <laughs> and therefore the answer is mellow. Not, not very um, often. Yeah. I <laughs> I've actually not very often. Right. I all kidding aside though, I actually have thought that Mello could end up one of the small ball options for this team because if you're if you're even able to do that, it means that you're not likely that worried uh, about whatever size you're going to be giving up, you know, a guy being like a real post option mate. Like, you know, if it were if it were for example a small ball center that you would actually look to do some scoring like a Montrez Harrell, the answer is going to be LeBron. Like you're mm-hmm. not you're not going to put Mello on a guy like that. Right. It's just Harrell's going to kill him. But if it's just a guy like, say, Rudy Gay against Utah, who's really like he is your small ball five, but in reality, he's, he's a stretch four. four. Right, he's a four. You can put Melo on that guy. Yeah. What I what I love about this is it is it it's a reminder of the options that the Lakers have available to them. For all the talk of them bludgeoning people with size, and by the way, they can. Like I still am kind of like the memory of looking at what their their lineup when AD was at the five with Russ and LeBron and Carmelo out there with Kent Bazemore. I'm like, that is a lot of human being. Like those are, I mean, you know, Bazemore is not a thick big, but he's got really long arms and like Melo is a thick dude and LeBron is LeBron and AD looks huge. Like that is a lot of person out there with a lot of arm and a lot of length. Like that is not a, like, and so I, I, I think they could try to do the thing where they, like you called it medium ball a couple years ago, they can go short with their height and still put good sized human beings out on the floor, particularly when Ariza is available. Um, so I, I'm, I see this as a question that really gets to how, how much are they going to experiment with different lineups? And like, what would a really small Lakers lineup look like when Anthony Davis rests? Um, could you put LeBron and Westbrook out there with Mello and a couple and just run, 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 run? And I, I, th- I would like to see them try. I think they will over the course of the year. Well, I mean, to ultimately, before we go to the next one, to actually answer Don's question, I think the answer is going to be Mello. Just because LeBron will have so many different opportunities over the course of the season where because he is so versatile, he can do so many different things. You're going to have him out there doing stuff that falls under the center umbrella less in these scenarios than Mello. So I think the answer ultimately is Mello. All right. Next one from our friend LAL uh, at LAL Never. Um, How many games does Dwight have where he has more fouls than minutes played? Um, and we can combine this question with uh, one from our friend David Murphy at Dave M two three four. Number of ejections for Dwight. Okay, first of all, before we even get in the answer, I want to make sure to give Dave a plug. Uh, read his blog, Searching for Slava. Yes, it's been great, great stuff covering the Lakers for years. Um, <laughs> here's what's funny because, and I was very excited about these questions because I don't remember what it was, but a few weeks ago we had. No, some, you've been itching to use this for a while. We had something, <laughs> some topic that came up about Dwight and fouling, and we ended up not using it in the show. But I, I actually did a little bit of digging. As far as Never's question, how many games does Dwight have more fouls than minutes played? The answer to that's zero, just because it takes a special type of incompetence to come up with that. That's like with Travis six fouls Knight. in six minutes. Right. right. That, that's Under just six minutes. Yeah. That's just, you got to be a certain special breed. Okay. How about this? How about we spin it? How many games do you think this year will Dwight will be, will be ejected in under six minutes? I'm going to put it at two, three. <laughs> I, think, I think that's a bet. That is a better way of phrasing my original mm-hmm. point. Three. Yes. Um, there's going to be a I few games foul out or be ejected from at least five games this year. Or, yeah, I'm going to say six games. And I will say that twice he will be eject- he will be ejected before he has played six minutes. OK, I, there's going to be a few. <laughs> we'll just leave right. it at that. Do I think this will be totally right? It's probably underestimating Dwight's ability to control himself a little bit. Do I want this prediction to come true? A thousand percent. I actually want myself to be wrong on the bottom end. <laughs> I want these numbers to be higher. Like, I think that would be, I, mean, as like, long, I want to see well, this happen. As long as it does, look, here's the thing though. 
and this is where I will disagree with you. And mm-hmm. I think this is sort of an overarching lesson about Dwight in general, before I get into a little bit more data uncovered, like a lot of things with Dwight, less is more. Dial it back. And I think that the first few of these will be kind of amusing. You start getting to like six or seven, you're going to say, what are you doing, jackass? Front, front load them to the beginning of the season. As yeah. we get a, as Maybe. we get going, yeah, and Let's, like a lot of things too, we'll compromise. Context and style points are going to matter a lot. Otherwise, you're going to start getting annoyed by this. All right, did you um, do you have more data before we get to our final? Yes, prediction? yes, I do. Okay, go ahead. Because um, I started looking more into Dwight's, uh, fo- you know, Dwight's sort of career as a fowler, mm-hmm. and it turns out he is, as we speak, the all-time leader among active players. With fouls, he's got 3,797 at number one. Number two, Mello with Uh 3,377. The Lakers, by the way, have five of the, this is also, again, (laughs) indicative of their age, five of the top 10 active players for fouls. Westbrook is at number eight. Jordan, DeAndre Jordan's at number nine. LeBron at number 10, they would have had six guys if they had kept Mark Gasol. He is currently ranked uh, number seven among active players. Uh, filling out the top 10 are Paul Millsap, Chris Paul, Kyle Lowry, and for some reason, Amir Johnson is still considered active. Uh, he's- <laughs> like, really? On what planet is Amir I have no Johnson? idea. He hasn't been in the league since 2019, but he is currently, li- maybe they give you a, like a little bit of grace time before they decide, okay, you're truly out. Amir Johnson is at number six, which in its own right, I find kind of impressive for Amir yeah. Johnson. Well, Dwight, and, Dwight is 20th all time, and he's only, he will pass, he will undoubtedly pass Sean Kemp, who is only 29 fouls ahead of him. Yes. He'll pass Terry Cummings. He'll probably pass Hal Greer. Dwight Howard could absolutely finish uh, very close to the top 10 in all time in fouls after this season. Taking this a little bit further, fanning out again, just reminding you how veteran this team is. The Lakers have seven players in the top 30 among active players for all time. Trevor Reza at number 18, Rajon Rondo at 28. And if they had kept Markeith Morris, who is currently number 29, they'd have had eight. Oh, he can, <laughs> have, it's just oh, it's man. just another way of framing right. just well, how you know, old. Guy's been around a while. Dwight could get to his 4,000th foul this year. How do we celebrate that on the big board? Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll do it. Uh, but right. that, would, that would put, if he got to 4,000 this year, he had 222 in his first season as a Laker, 200 last year. If he split the difference, that would allow him to pass Vince Carter uh, for, and he would be 14th all time. Um, all right, last one, Andy. This is the one that matters. This is the one that everybody's been waiting for. Will the Lakers win a title this season? Yes. I think they have a legitimate opportunity to do this. As much as they've got a lot of pieces to put together, a lot of teams are also going to be somewhat behind the eight ball in terms of their own guys that are missing, whether you're talking about Denver, whether you're talking about Golden State, whether you're talking about the Clippers. You know, Phoenix and Utah have obviously a continuity edge over the Lakers, but at the same time, though, as much as I, I really think Phoenix is a legitimately good team, at the same time, I don't think their high end is quite as high as the Lakers could mm-hmm. be. I think they're an incredibly well-constructed roster, um, assuming DeAndre Ayton isn't totally pissed off all season that Robert Sarver decided not to give him an extension, uh, max extension. That didn't work out. It's not going to get worked out this season. But Phoenix is really good. I don't think they have the same top end as the Lakers. And Utah, I think, ultimately is going to keep running into the same problems. I also happen to think they are a very bad matchup um, against the Lakers uh, for them, not for the Lakers. Right. Um, I think the Lakers ultimately have the ability to get a lot of this stuff working out when it really matters the most. And I also feel like the idea that somehow they're going to work it out in the regular season, but the whatever adjustments that they make, the things they figure out won't apply in the playoffs. I don't buy it because that's I think fair. To and make, that's, uh, that's fair. I think I, to make I, it all work requires so much specificity. I don't see how it falls and they'll have the and they'll have workarounds at that point. They yeah. will have you know contingencies and 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 counters and all that kind of stuff. I have them obviously. I have them in the finals. And right now, I mean, I am so fifty five forty five still a little bit behind Brooklyn, even without Kyrie. And I think, the, you know, the Kyrie thing in some ways, you know, if, if Harden and, and Durant stay healthy, I like the rest of that roster. And I do think there is some simplification there 
um, that goes with it. But you lose. I mean, look, not having Kyrie is a massive blow to them. But the other thing is, I do think we're forgetting about Milwaukee. And if Milwaukee gets through, I think they are actually, in some ways, a more difficult matchup for the Lakers. Oh, yeah. Because defensively, oh, they yeah. match up so much better against L.A. that I think if it that it opens the door to Milwaukee, everybody says, oh, my God. I think Milwaukee's kind of a coin flip right now series with the Lakers. Um, and so I have them a shade at no in the finals, losing in seven to one of those teams. But I mean, Mike, I can't get any closer. I, I hate to waffle on this, so I will. No is my my early season prediction. But I mean, my God, I think it is close. But, I, but it's as much because I believe in the, the ability of Milwaukee to match up with these guys. And now they are more likely to get through. Um, Cause I think they are probably more dangerous to the Lakers than a Kyrie less pile up numbers. Uh, Nets team. Here's what I want. That's, that's really my quick, thinking really before quick we before go. we sure. go with Brooklyn. Um, they obviously have a top end that is great. I understand why they've been considered the consensus favorite. And I think some people still have them there even without Kyrie. But if you are going to, throw out all these injury concerns for the Lakers, you have to have do to the do exact that. same thing Absolutely. for Brooklyn. Absolutely. And I, I only say this because I haven't heard a lot of people doing it with Brooklyn, I, but yeah. I hear it a lot with the Lakers. All right. So those are some bold predictions. Thank you, everybody, for sending stuff in. Again, thank you for making us your first listen of every day. We are super excited about what's coming this season and appreciate everybody coming with us uh, on the podcast, on the YouTube channel, and we will have all the post-game analysis.